In this video, we'll discuss hippocampus and its function as memory formation and its different types of cells involved in memory formation. Hippocampus is a part of the limbic system and is situated in the medial temporal lobe and it plays an important role in both short-term and long-term memories. Which type of memory can be acquired without hippocampus? Procedural memories can be acquired without hippocampus. Without hippocampus, one is able to form new memories such as piano playing, painting and sports but remain unaware of that. What's system consolidation? Hippocampus is transient point for long-term memory. Consolidation of information from short-term to long-term memory requires three months. Then long-term memory becomes independent of hippocampus and is stored in the corresponding parts of the brain. What's the role of hippocampus in retrieving long-term memory? Different components of memory are stored in corresponding different different parts of the brain. When it is recalled, the perceived sensation in the various sensory areas of the cortex are combined in the hippocampus into one single experience. Hippocampus gathers all the information from these areas and memory is repeated. How activity in hippocampus is measured? Theta waves are used to measure activity in the hippocampus but can also measure activity in other parts of the brain. Theta waves are thought to be linked to learning learning and memory. What are the EEG features of theta wave? Theta waves are mainly large regular waves. What are the causes of hippocampal abnormalities? In Alzheimer's disease, there is progressive loss of memory and cognitive function due to loss of cholinergic neurons in the cerebral cortex, especially in the nucleus bacillus of Maynard and hippocampus. In Alzheimer's disease, hippocampus is contracted along with cerebral cortex and ventricles are dilated. Drugs that impair or alter recent memory produce abnormal discharges in the hippocampus. Protein synthesis inhibitors, puromycin and acetooxycycloxamide cause defect in memory. Alcoholics develop defect in recent memory because of a pathological changes in the mammillary body. Implanted electrodes in hippocampus also cause loss of recent memory. Damage to the hippocampus can also result from trauma, tumor, infection, hypoxia, and encephalitis. What are the connections of hippocampus? Hippocampus connected to the fornix, to the mammillary body, and through mammalothalamic tract to anterior thalamic nuclei, and then to the cingulum and then to entorhinal cortex. What parts of the brain are involved in long-term potentiation? Hippocampus is the main structure involved in long-term potentiation, but LTP also occurs in other brain regions, cerebral cortex, amygdala, and cerebellum. Which hippocampal parts are involved in long-term potentiation? Hippocampus has three important structures that are involved in long-term potentiation. CA1 and CA3 cells and Schaeffer collateral axon. How CA1 and CA3 cells are connected? CA1 and CA3 cells are connected by Schaeffer collateral axon. Schaeffer collateral axons are the axons of the CA3 cell. They synapse with the dendrites of the CA1 cell. CA3 cells send signals to CA1 cells via these Schaeffer collateral axons. This is how CA3 cells are connected to the CA1 cell. How CA3 stimulates CA1 cells. The theta burst stimulation of Schaeffer collateral induces long-term potentiation by promoting the formation of filamentous actin in CA1. What, is, what are the effects of stimulation of Schaeffer collateral? Theta burst stimulates CA3 cell that stimulates Schaeffer collateral axon and excitatory postsynaptic potentials are generated, releases glutamate. Glutamate binds to AMP PA receptor first, not to NMDA receptors. Why? Because NMDA receptor has magnesium in its center which inhibits the activity of NMDA receptor. So this AMPA receptor first removes magnesium from the NMPA receptor so that it becomes active. What are the inputs and outputs from CA1 and CA3 cells? Major inputs to the hippocampus CA1 and CA3 cells starts from perforant pathway that starts from entorhinal cortex. The entorhinal cortex 
cortic exon inputs to the dentate gyrus. Cells of the dentate gyrus are connected to the CA3 cells via mossy fibers and then CA3 is connected to CA1 cells as we discussed earlier. I repeat, entorhinal cortex exons inputs to dentate gyrus and then dentate gyrus to the CA3 cells via mossy fibers. What are the output of hippocampus? The pathway from CA1 to entorhinal cortex form the principal output from a hippocampus. So input to the hippocampus is on the CA3 cells from the entorhinal cortex and output from hippocampus is from CA1 cell to entorhinal cortex and which fibers are connected between dentate gyrus and the CA3 cell is the mossy fibers they connect the dentate gyrus to the CA3 cell.